Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh all pervading personality of God. Oh all pervading personality of God. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond it him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By as one is bewildered by the illusory representations, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen in water, of water seen in fire or land seen in water, only because of him do the material universes, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, temporarily manifested by the reaction of three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode? Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravota. Dharma projita kaitravota. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atravastu. Vedyam vastavam atravastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Sadyohridi Avurudyate. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The high truth, the reality, is distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, this beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one is attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahorasika bhuvi bhavakaha. Muhur ahorasika bhuvi bhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hidiantak Stohi Abhadrani. Hidiantak Stohi Abhadrani. We do notice Rahit Satam. We do notice Rahit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly from the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, 
Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's Acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as the best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preeshu bhadreshu. Nasta preeshu bhadreshu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhaktir bhavati naistiki. Bhaktir bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed. Uh, he he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chete eta renavidam. Chete eta renavidam. Stitam sattve prasidati. Stitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Pidyate hridaya grantis. Pidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante tasya karmani. Chidyante tasya karmani. Drista evat manishwari. Drista evat manishwari. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna and or from his devotees. <clears throat> in Krishna consciousness, in Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Eighteen, Text Number Eighteen, Sutta Uvacha, Sutta Uvacha, Aho Vayam Janma Brito Yahasma. Yapi vilo majata. Vritan vritya pi vilo majata. Dos kul yamad him vinu noti sigram. Dos kul yamad him vinu noti sigram. Mahatmanam abidana yoga. Mahatmanam. Abhidhana Yoga. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Sri Sutta Goswami said, O oh God, although we are born in a mixed caste, we are still promoted to birthright simply by serving the following great who are advanced in knowledge. Even by conversing with such great souls, one can, without delay, Cleanse oneself of all disqualifications resulting from lower births. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Sutta Goswami did not take his birth in a Brahmana family. He was born in a family of mixed caste or an uncultured low family. But because of higher association, Sri Sukadeva Goswami and the great rishis of Naimisharanya, certainly, yeah, certainly the disqualification of inferior birth was washed off. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu followed this principle in pursuance of the Vedic usages. And by his transcendental association, he elevated many lowborn or those disqualified by birth or action to the status of devotional service and establish them in a position of acharyas or authorities. He clearly stated that any man, whatever he may be, whether a brahmana or sudra by birth, or a householder or a mendicant in the order of, in the order of society, 
if he is conversant with the science of Krishna, he can be accepted as an acharya or guru, a spiritual master. Sutta Goswami learned the science of Krishna from great <coughs> rishis and authorities like Sukadeva and Vyasadeva. And he was so qualified that even the sages of Daimisaranya eagerly wanted to hear from him the science of Krishna in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he had the double association of great souls by hearing and preaching. Transcendental science, or the science of Krishna, has to be learned from the authorities. And when one preaches the science, he becomes still more qualified. So Sutta Goswami had both the advantages and thus and undoubtedly he was completely freed from all disqualifications of low birth and mental agonies. This verse definitely proves that she, Sukadeva Goswami, did not refuse to teach Sutta Goswami about the transcendental science, nor did the sages of Naimrasharanya refuse to hear lessons from him because of his inferior birth. This means that thousands of years ago, there was no bar to learning or preaching the transcendental science because of inferior birth. The rigidity of the so-called caste system in Hindu society became prominent within only 100 years or so when the number of Dvija Bandhus or disqualified men in the families of higher caste increased. Lord Sri Chaitanya revived the original Vedic system and he elevated Thakur Haridasa to the position of Nama Acharya, or the authority in preaching the glories of the holy name of the Lord. Although his holiness, Srila Haridas Thakur, was pleased to appear in a family of Mohammedans. Such is the power of pure devotees of the Lord. The Ganges water is accepted as pure, and one can become purified after taking bath in the waters of the Ganges. But as far as the great devotees of the Lord are concerned, they can purify a degraded soul even by being seen by the lowborn and what to speak of association. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to purify the whole atmosphere of the polluted world by sending qualified preachers all over the world. And it remains with the Indians to take up this task scientifically and thus do the best kind of humanitarian work. The mental diseases of the present generation are more acute than bodily diseases. It is quite fit and proper to take up the preaching of Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world without delay Mahatmanam Abhidana also means dictionary of great devotees or a book full of the words of great devotees. Such a dictionary of the words of great devotees and those of the Lord are in the Vedas and allied literatures, specifically the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada Patita Bhavani Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Haribo. Yeah, there's a very nice verse in the first canto, first chapter. I hope I can find it. And it says that, it's right near the end. Uh, it says... Yeah, so it says, so it says, the living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately by even unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is feared by fear personified. Right. 
Apanasam Sritim Goram Yannama Viva Sogrinam Tatasadyo Vimuchita Yad Bibeti Bibeti Swayam Bayam. So this is a very nice verse, but connected to this verse is another verse that says that simply by associating with a pure devotee and practicing what's called the art of submissive hearing, one can become uh, free from the chain of, uh, one can become free from the chained encumbrance of the modes of material nature and go back to Godhead. <clears throat> The first condition is that the audience must be very sincere and eager to hear, and the speaker must be in the line of disciplic succession from the recognized acharya. The transcendental message of the Absolute is not understandable by those who are materially absorbed. Under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, one becomes gradually purified. Therefore, one must be in the chain of disciplic succession and learn the spiritual art of submissive hearing. In this case of Sutta Goswami and the sages in Naimisharanya, all these conditions are fulfilled because Sri Sutta Goswami is in the line of Srila Vyasadeva and the sages in Naimisharanya are all sincere souls who are anxious to learn the truth. Thus, the transcendental topics of Lord Sri Krishna's superhuman activities, his incarnation, his birth, appearance or disappearance, his forms, his names, and so on, are all easily understandable because all requirements are fulfilled. That is, the speaker is qualified and the listeners are qualified because they've learned the, the spiritual art of submissive hearing. His names and so on are all easily understandable because all requirements are fulfilled. Such discourses help all men on the path of spiritual realization. <clears throat> So, and then it says, living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately by even unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is feared by feared personify. And then it says, O Sutta, those great sages who have completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord can at once sanctify those who come in touch with them. Whereas the waters of the Ganges can sanctify only after prolonged use. And in this purport, Prabhupada says, pure devotees of the Lord are more powerful than the waters of the sacred river Ganges. One can derive, derive spiritual benefit out of prolonged use of Ganges water, but one can be sanctified at once by the mercy of a pure devotee of the Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that any person, regardless of birth as sudra, woman, or merchant, can take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord and by so doing can return to Godhead. To take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord means to take shelter of the pure devotees. The pure devotees whose only business is serving are honored by the names Prabhupada and Vishnupada, which indicate such devotees to be representatives of the lotus feet of the Lord. Anyone, therefore, who takes shelter of the lotus feet of a pure devotee by accepting the pure devotee as a spiritual master can be at once purified. Such devotees of the Lord are honored equally with the Lord because they are engaged in the most confidential service of the Lord, for they deliver out of the material world the fallen souls whom the Lord wants to return home back to Godhead. Such pure devotees are better known as vice lords, According to revealed scriptures, the sincere disciple of the pure devotee considers the spiritual master equal to the Lord, but always considers himself to be a humble servant of the servant of the Lord. This is the pure devotional path. And then <laughs> lastly it says, Who is there desiring deliverance from the vices of the age of Carl, quarrel, who is not willing to hear the verses, uh, I'm sorry, who is not willing to hear the virtuous glories of the Lord. So this is called a rhetorical question. And he says, who is there 
desiring deliverance from the vices of the age of quarrel, who is not willing to hear the virtuous glories of the whole. In other words, if you hear the virtuous glories of the Lord, you will be delivered from the vices of the age of Kali. So what kind of person is there that would not want to do this, not want to come to the class every day and hear? What kind of person is that? <laughs> and he answers the question in a purple, and he says, the age of Kali is the most condemned age due to its quarrelsome features. Kali Yuga is so saturated with vicious habits that there is a great fight at the slightest misunderstanding. Those who are engaged in the pure devotional service of the Lord, who are without any desire for self-aggrandizement, and who are freed from the effects of fruit of actions and dry philosophical speculations, are capable of getting out of the estrangements of this complicated age. Estrangements means a separation from God. It's implying that. So in other words, this is the qualification of those people who don't want to hear every day. And they are, one, they have a desire for self Aggrandizement means increasing their wealth and possessions. They still are affected by fruit of actions and dry philosophical speculations. And because of those qualifications, they cannot uh, stop being separated from Krishna in this complicated age. The leaders of the people are very much anxious to live in peace and friendship, but they have no information of the simple method of hearing the glories of the Lord. On the contrary, such leaders are opposed to the propagation of the glories of the Lord. In other words, the foolish leaders want to completely deny the existence of the Lord. In the name of secular state, such leaders are enacting various plans every year but by the insurmountable intricacies of the material nature of the Lord, all these plans for progress are being constantly frustrated. They have no eyes to see that their attempts at peace and friendship are failing, but here is the hint to get over the hurdle. If we want actual peace, we must open the road to understanding of the Supreme Lord Krishna and glorify him for his virtuous activities as they are depicted in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, so these verses, Canto 1, Chapter 1, verses, uh, verses 13, 14, 15, and 16 are very important because this hearing regularly and chanting and repeating what you've heard, meaning preaching it, is the, is the path of liberation, of becoming freed from all uh, reactions of sinful activities and chanting purely the holy name, not feeling any anxiety or fear. Uh, this is the sure way to, to attain that position. So, there's some interesting verses in the 14th chapter, 20th verse of Bhagavad Gita. It says, Gunanitan atityachin dehi deha samud bhavam janramityu jara dukair vimukdo amritam asnate. A nice, very nice verse, and it says, when the embodied being is able to transcend these three modes associated with the material body, he can become free from birth, death, old age, and their distresses, and can enjoy nectar even in this life. Enjoy nectar even in this life. So, vimukto amritam asnate. So, so what does that mean exactly? That means how one can stay in the transcendental position even in this body, in full Krishna consciousness, as explained in this verse. 
The Sanskrit word Dehi means embodied. Although one is within this material world, uh, I'm sorry, although one is within this material body, by his advancement and spiritual knowledge, he can be free from the influence of the modes of nature. So how do you advance in spiritual knowledge? It's through shravanam kirtanam. And the more you do shravanam kirtanam, the more you advance in spiritual knowledge. He can enjoy the happiness of spiritual life even in this body because after leaving this body, he is certainly going to the spiritual sky. But even in this body, he can enjoy spiritual happiness. In other words, devotional service in Krishna consciousness is the sign of liberation from material entanglement. And this will be explained in the 18th chapter when one is freed from the influence of the modes of material nature, he enters into devotional service. Well, there he's referring to 1855. Uh, so, that's a very important verse quoted often by Prabhupada. And it says, one can understand me as I am as the Supreme Personality of Godhead only by devotional service. Actually, it's the previous verse. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochatina Kanksati Samaksar Vesabhute Su Adbhaktim Labhate Param. One who is thus transcendentally situated is one at once realizes the Supreme Brahman, meaning Krishna, and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed toward every living entity. In that state, uh, he attains pure devotional service unto me. So you notice it's said here that such a person becomes fully joyful, right? And in this verse, 1420, it says that he can enjoy nectar even in this lifetime. Or in other words, he, 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 in the purport it says that uh, he can enjoy happiness of spiritual life even in this body. And then in the third, uh, let's see, 13th chapter, 13th verse, again Krishna says, let's see, where is that? 13th chapter, 13th verse. He says, Jnanam yet tat pravakshami yaj gyat vam ritam asnate. Anadi matparam brahma nasat tan nasat uchyate. So this, this verse, yaj gyat vam ritam asnate. So that's the same word uh, as the other verse where it says, vimukto amritam asnate. Asnate in Sanskrit means he enjoys. And amritam means nectar of immortality, basically. So, in 13.13 it says, I shall now explain the knowable, knowing which you will taste the eternal, Brahman, the spirit, beginningless and subordinate to me. So he's, he's saying, in this verse, he's talking about the jiva. <laughs> and uh, subordinate to me lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world. And in the purport, Prabhupada writes, the Lord has explained the field of activities, meaning the body, and the knower of the field, meaning the jiva and the paramatma. He has also explained the process of knowing the knower of the field of activities, 13th chapter, 8th to 12th verse. Now he begins to explain the knowable, first the soul and then the super soul. By knowledge of the knower, both the soul and super soul, one can relish the nectar of life. Again, he's talking about nectar of life and he's connecting it to knowledge. Understanding uh, the chetra, the jiva, and paramatma, and ultimately Bhagavan. So, here we have such a nice explanation in the Bhagavad Gita guaranteeing us happiness in this lifetime. You don't have to Go back to Godhead in the spiritual body to be spiritually happy. You can taste it right now. Right? 
vimukto amritam asnate. So, uh, and this is due to the power of pure devotees. Now, the most prominent pure devotee in Krishna consciousness movement is Srila Prabhupada. No doubt about it. So if we take shelter of Srila Prabhupada with the help of Sikh and Diksha Gurus, and that's the whole point of initiation. Initiation connects us to the parampara, to all the transcendental personalities in the parampara. And in our case, especially the Srila Prabhupada is so close to us. But included in that parampara is Lord Chaitanya and the six Goswamis. And included in that parampara is Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Gorkashura Babaji and Thakur Harita and the uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Jagannath uh, Babaji and going all the way back to uh, uh, Madhvacharya and going back further to Vyasadeva and Narada Muni and Lord Brahma. So it's such a glorious, and of course Krishna is such a glorious, and not only Krishna, the whole spiritual world. Radha and Krishna, Nanda Maharaj and everybody. So we're connected to that lineage through initiation uh, today. So once we realize that, it's actually an overwhelming thing. Let's, let's say you're born into a family of very, very prominent persons who are famous all over the world. So you feel uh, privileged. Well, the initiation in Krishna consciousness mean, means you're reborn into a family of the most prominent persons in the material world and the spiritual world. So you should understand what a privilege it is to join such exalted association. Just like we're reading, we're coming to the, almost to the end of this first canto. Well, we've, we've, we read about our, our real ancestors, our, our real lineage is Parikshit Maharaj and Yudhisthir Maharaj and Bhisma Pita Maha and Kunti Devi and Devaki and so many persons, Yasoda Mai. This, this is our lineage. This is who we are. This is our real family, eternal family. So, so if we understand that, then we begin to taste the nectar of, uh, of devotion to such persons. That's who we're, we're not only serving Srila Prabhupada, we're serving all those persons because that's the, the service that we render goes to our spiritual master and it goes to Srila Prabhupada and it goes through all the parampara all the way up to Krishna. And then Krishna's blessing comes back to us through all those personalities. Uh, so it's just, this is like a, a going up escalator and a coming down escalator. Service goes up, Mercy comes down. Okay. So we should always live depending on the mercy of the Lord. And that's through this submissive hearing, regulated, regular submissive hearing. And hearing who, what? Not hearing nonsense, but hearing the words of uh, the pure devotees uh, from Prabhupada all the way to Krishna. So I think I'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yeah, in, this per in the verse today it says, even by conversing with such great souls, one can without delay cleanse oneself of all disqualifications resulting from lower births. Now all of us have been born in lower births, but by hearing this on a regular basis, basis we overcome all those obstacles and become qualified to be a representative of Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yes, you got it? Show it to Prabhu. So, yeah.